So here it is. The all new Factor Ostro arrives in Palma de Mallorca. Uh, this is the bike which has kind of replaced the one, although the one is still being sold. The one was the bike that Factor introduced themselves to the market with and fully aero bike. Um, there's some similarities that have been kind of uh, inherited by, by this bike. And they also have the O2 as well, which is a lighter fully climbing bike with no real aero qualities. So this bike is kind of taking little bits from both because it is the has the VAM moniker here, which means that they're using a higher grade of carbon to make it lighter. And the big problem really with the one was that it was really quite heavy, un aero un undoubtedly, but quite a, quite a porky frame. I actually bought one and um, it arrived at over 1200 grams for the frame and uh, it 450, no, it was at 500, I think for the fork. So um, this frame here is 824 grams and uh, the fork is, is below 400. So basically this bike here, as you see it with fully ready to go with bottle cages, um, the, whole, the whole thing and the, and the Garmin mount, is uh, 6.5 kilos and that's using uh, 59 mil deep uh, tubs the reason a lot of the weight saving come from the the tubular tires because the wheels are so light they're 1200 grams cadence wheels are very good um, very high quality build the price isn't too bad either they have a balancing counterweight the other side of the of the valve down there so they're perfectly balanced um, nice and stiff I've ridden this uh, not too far yet but they feel good uh, nice and solid um, I've ridden this bike so far just on one windy day so I can't judge it at all yet really it's 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 far too early to tell and it's winter it's cold you've got winter clothes nice. on and all that kind of stuff so I'm gonna reserve judgment but it does feel very very stiff very solid um, went over some bumpy some bumpy tracks and feels absolutely fine not a lot of buzz coming through um, this has been built up with some some light stuff AX lightness saddle here 74 grams what I'd like to do is change the seat post for a Darimo one once they actually start to make one uh, because you may have seen on my SL6 I have one and I think they're fantastic you save 100 grams straight away and the clamping system is actually better than the traditional clamping system here because they're using Dyneema strings and it works really well. Uh, in terms of uh, lightning things, you, there's not a lot you can do really because you're, you're fixed with their bar and stem. This is actually not the right size for me at the moment. This is a 100 by 400 setup and I'm traditionally used to a much longer stem, 130 and a narrower bar, so 380. So it feels a little bit odd at the moment but it, within a month I'll get the correct one and then I can uh, judge the feel better. You do see the carbon, I don't know if it's coming out here that much, but you can see the carbon coming through. This is the just lacquered version really, it's mostly kind of unpainted. So uh, if you don't like that raw carb carbon look, then it's probably not for you. But to be fair, this is in bright sunshine and it really comes out, whereas in any other light, it just looks kind of black really. So yeah, nice little touches are the uh, ceramic speed blue uh, cups down there and um, just the nice little blue hints here and there. The, uh, in terms of the aero shape, this down tube is, is really massive, especially compared to the, to the tarmac. And it's got a nice teardrop shape at the front here. The fork is also completely different to the tarmac. It's, um, it's much deeper and it blends in with the frame nicely here. Um, quite a massive thing really. So you would hope that's, that's nice and aero. And a big clearance, a lot of, lot of air space at the front there. And if you look at the profile, I mean, that's pretty clean. Um, you can see that sliding through the air quite nicely. So fingers crossed we'll be getting some high speeds on this. And, um, yeah, what else to say really? I'm going to be riding this kind of back to back with my SL6 S-Works Tarmac, which is a rim brake bike, and compare them a little bit and see 
and see how they go. I'm expecting this to be faster on the flats and uh, the, the SL6 to be uh, the better climbing bike, but I could be wrong. Um, we'll see how that, how that pans out. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's winter here, obviously, um, but it's 12, 13 degrees today, nice and sunny. The wind's dropped from yesterday, so I should be able to get a few more decent conclusions out of this today. So let's see how we go. So just another couple of things that may be worth mentioning on this bike. Um, I'm new to discs, so it's all a bit of an experiment for me at the moment. And on the front here is a Galfa 140. Normally you would have a 160 on the front. And I just thought, you know, I'll try the 140. I think uh, there's plenty of power to be had. And I'm only 65 kilos if I stay off the cakes, which has been difficult over Christmas. But, um, and it needs to bed in. I've only done like, uh, 80k on it so far but there's plenty of power there there could be more bite i would say and a little bit more you know if you want to do a very hard stop then i think a 160 would be better so i'm going to get a 160 and try that as well and see how it feels but for now i mean it's it's pretty good and the modulation is great it feels very uh you can dial in exactly the amount of braking that you want which, which is nice and you may notice that the cycle speed aero trick has been applied here on the front wheel uh, this is a silicon bead which has just been smoothed over between the tire and the rim so there's no valley so this is just a completely smooth surface now so when the wind hits from here it just transitions completely smoothly over the rim there's no turbulence and then afterwards it does its thing obviously but um, yeah that helps a bit it's uh, the weight is, is negligible and um, definitely there's an error gain there so there's there's a video for that if you fancy looking at, in more detail at how to do it and these uh these seat stays on the back here are very thin um pencil pencil thin really which looks slightly uh you know fragile i would say but i think it does help with um giving the bike a lot of compliance at the back because these aero seat posts would normally be um quite stiff because of their their profile so this helps give a little bit of give um the danger with these things is and i've seen it before when i was tour guiding is that uh if they're if they're transported badly they can just snap with a decent blow from the side they can just snap but in terms of the strength of the bike you know they obviously stabilize and they help but i kind of think that um they're making the chain stay so thick and strong these days that you could almost actually sort of do away with the with the seat stays entirely so they're kind of there as a as a brace really more than more than anything um and their aero obviously which uh, which is nice well there's proof that it's not always sunny in Mallorca. it's actually a little bit cold and wet today so indoor stuff and conclusions wise for this bike well it's early days yet i haven't ridden it a great deal so i don't want to uh, make too many hasty uh, conclusions but i kind of went into this wanting to get the fastest bike that i could without being a, like a full-on uh, time trial bike. I wanted to be able to go fast and I was kind of thinking that this would be the bike I would use to go to go fastest on, but that potentially I'd keep the S-Works and that would be the bike I would most enjoy riding. So I don't know if it's gonna pan out like that. So far this bike feels similar to the S-Works. It um, feels great out of the saddle when you're giving it some, some power out of the saddle. It feels nice and stiff and responsive. Um, the only thing I would say that I've noticed with this bike, and it's, it's been quite windy and the bar, as I said, is, is not the bar that I would normally have. So I'm being a little bit careful with this, but it felt slightly less reluctant to flick around holes or when you want to just flick past somebody, that immediate snappy little, little turn felt a touch slower. Now I've looked at the geometries of, of both bikes quite carefully and they're almost identical so there's nothing really there that would suggest that the angles and the c tube uh, the the tube dimensions are, are pretty much bang on the only slight difference i found was that the the fork length on this bike is, is 10 mil higher but that's kind of compensated for by a 10 mil shorter head tube so i don't think it's that the bb is a couple of mil higher on this bike but really um, it, it's very very similar so i think that needs a little bit more investigation into that and we'll see see if that's justified or not. The, these wheels are 10 mil deeper than the Bora's, but they're the exact same weight. So I don't think it's anything to do with the wheels. 
although as I said it's been windy and, and uh, a bit gusty and I do feel that these wheels have caught a lot more wind than the than the Boris did and the bike also you can see its side profile has a lot more going on than the S works I mean it's a very different looking bike and so the fork is wide the the down tube is wide the seat tube is wide so it's gonna and the BB area is pretty massive too so it's gonna catch side wings that bit more than the S-Works and the wheels are deeper. So that's something to bear in mind. And I think if it's really windy day, I would probably go with the S-Works because it's less susceptible to that. Um, so anyway, yeah, the uh, next week I'm gonna be riding both bikes side by side, uh, doing some testing on them um, and see which comes out on top. 